Hi guys, welcome back to the next part of the series. Today we're gonna continue with the snake lamp and uh, we're gonna jump into UVs, which is something that a lot of people struggle with, but it's actually very easy. I, I, I find UVs to be one of those things that's actually not as difficult as it seems once you know the correct process. So I'm gonna show it to you. Now, as you can see here, I did went over the whole thing and I added a little bit more detail to some areas, not everything, because you can see, for instance, this thing right here, the little valves, they don't really need much detail. They're they're very good as, as they are. But the handles on the snake, this thing over here, there's a couple of scratches, a little bit of train dynamic here and there. I didn't want to go super heavy on the uh, on the detail, except for the for the snake up here. This is when you can see I even added like some sort of like bite marks there. Um, and, and that's fine. Like having something like this is completely fine because even if we want to add a little bit more detail later on, we can use the textures to do so. So um, this one, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to control D a couple of times. And then since this is the shape that I actually want, but it's a little bit too heavy, I'm just going to go all the way down here to geometry, see remesher, and I'm going to see remesh it. Should be a very simple see remesh for, for uh, Seabrush. It will give me enough resolution where I need it so that it's uh, low poly enough. And uh, again, everything should be working fine. So let's just give it a couple of seconds here. There we go. So now if we take a look, look at that. That's uh, It's a little bit heavy, but it's not super heavy. It's only five, uh, 6,000 points. Um, and we can even go lower. Like I can go here and say uh, half and just see remesh. And I can do another half. And it will keep the shape. You can see how we're going down and down and down. And we're not losing that much resolution. So uh, we'll leave it like that. Now, here's the, here's the thing. We need to export the high poly, especially for the objects that have things that are high poly. So I'm going to go into Maya and I'm going to start creating a little bit of an organization over here. What do I mean by this? Well, um, the things that do not have any high polys, which is this bulb, this cap, this bulb, this bulb, and I think it's um, this guy right here, like all of those elements do not have high polys. I'm going to control G. I'm going to shift P this group so that it's in a different group. And I'm going to call this group snake lamp low. And to all of these guys, I'm just going to add the uh, suffix underscore low. And we're going to do this because we want to do something interesting with the, um, on the, on the texture side of things, once we hit the textures. So we're going to say that. Okay. Now over here, there are other things that do have a low poly. So for instance, this one, the handle, right? Handle is perfectly fine right now. So I'm just going to go all the way here. I'm going to export this and I'm going to export this uh, into our data folder. Here, assets, snake lamp, I'm just going to lamp handle. That's perfectly fine. Go back into Maya. We're going to delete this one. We don't need it anymore. So file import. And again, from our assets folder, snake lamp, we have the lamp handle. There we go. So first, pi first piece already. Let's go for a second one. And in this case, this is going to be the little, um, the little snake that we have here. Now, I don't want to export the low subdivision level because as you can see, it's really, really, really low. So I'm going to go a couple of subdivisions level up, probably something like this, I think is, is fine. Um, and one thing we can actually do to ha have a little bit of a better resolution is we could, we could see remesh this as well. And the only problem with see remeshing is that it might give us a little bit more resolution that we actually want. So let me see. I think, I think we can get away with this one right here. Now, now let's do it the proper way. We said we were going to do this the proper way. So even if it takes a little bit more geometry, let's do it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, geometry. And I'm going to, well, first I'm going to go sub tool. I'm going to duplicate this guy so that I have a copy. And then the one on top, I'm just going to say geometry, C remesh. And let's wait for the C remesher. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to clean geometry, right? And yes, this will bring the poly count way up. But again, I think I think it's worth it for an asset such as this that's going to go into like a cinematic a pipeline. So there you go. That's not bad. I am going to try and see if we can make this uh, go a little bit lower. So let's try half. So that's a little bit better. Let's see the difference. That's 10,000 points. That's a little bit too heavy. Half is, is better. I just want to make sure that there's no spirals. There doesn't seem to be any. So yeah, that, that, I think that, that one's going to work. So I'm going to export this as well. Export. A small snake that's perfectly fine and we need to export the other one as well the high poly but in such a way that we can conserve as much detail as possible so i'm going to clone this over here i'm going to say c plugin 
Decimation Master, and let's bring it all the way down to like 35k. I don't think we need anything more because the surface is very, uh, very flat. I have an itchy ear now. So we're using Decimation Master to bring this thing all the way down to a very low uh, poly, uh, poly count. Now here, we don't need this guy anymore, so let's delete it. Now this lamp handle that we just got in here, I am going to bring it into the small group, uh, low uh, groups, right here, so P. And I'm going to rename it, lamp handle underscore low. Whoop. There we go. Now I'm going to say file, import, and let's import the, um, the snake. So well, we need to wait for the decimation master to, to happen. There we go. So let's export this and we're going to call this small snake underscore high. And then this one right here, uh, this one, we're also going to export and this is going to be small snake uh, on the assets folder. Where's the assets folder? Here. Small snake oh, underscore low. I think this one got exported somewhere, somewhere else. So again, export. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's, it's sending it there, whatever. Uh, here? Nope. Here we go. Snake lamp, small snake. This is going to be small snake high. We go back to Maya. We import this small, uh, small snake low first. There we go. So this one goes to this group. And now we're going to create a new group. It's going to be called, it's going to press control G. And I'm going to call it the same, same exact thing, just high. And here's where we're going to have the high polys. So here on the high polys, I'm going to say file, import. Let's import the small snake high. And here's the most important thing of everything. We need to make sure that the name of the object here matches perfectly and only changes on the suffix, see? So capital S, capital S, capital S, capital S, underscore low, underscore high, because we're gonna do a function in, in substance that will match the things that we uh, that we need into their respective place. So we're gonna do the same thing for all of the pieces here. And one way in which we can actually like uh, accelerate this process a little bit would be to combine. Now this one, for instance, I'm gonna go all the way low uh, to the lowest subdivision, probably one level higher, like something like this. Um, yeah, that's fine. And we're going to export this. That's lamp top underscore low. Let's go here. And then we're going to go all the way up. We clone this thing and we're going to decimate it as well. So C plugin, decimation master, and uh, let's go same thing all the way down to like a 75K. So I'm going to pause the video real quick, guys, just to, again, save you a little bit of time. I don't want to go super long on this, like, setup. I want to focus on the UV. So I'm going to pause the video real quick. I'm going to finish doing all the prep work for the low polys and the high polys here from, from ZBrush. And I'll see you back in just a jump. It's going to be a heat jump for you where we're going to continue with the UVs. Very well, guys. So we're finally here back in Maya with all of the objects uh, ready to go into uh, Substance before we need to do the UVs, of course. And I just want to show you this. The, this group right here contains the objects that actually have any sort of change in their geometry. You can see the, the changes in the surface there. And that's the thing that we're going to be baking inside of uh, Substance. So this like uh, like big bump right there, all of the trim dynamic things that we did, of course, all of the details here for the big Cobra. And uh, that's what we're going to be focusing on. So as you can see, not every single object needs to have a high poly. That's a very common mistake, again, that uh, new people make, where they think everything has to have a, low, a high poly. Not necessarily. It helps, of course, but it's not necessary, especially for, for things like this guy, right? Like, do we really need a high poly for this one? No, that one's perfectly fine. With that amount of division, that one works just fine. So I'm going to hide the high polys for now, and let's focus on the low polys, because we need to get the UBs for all of these guys. So I'm going to select everything here. You can see that it's, it's actually quite heavy. We're not going to be subdividing this uh, more. As you can see, we're already at over a, a, a thousand or a hundred K uh, polygons. So this is, this is perfectly fine. We don't need to do any more subdivisions. So I'm just going to grab everything, mesh display and soften edge first to make sure everything is super soft. This is what you're going to be seeing uh, on the render, on the, on the cinematic shot. And now let's do UBs. So <laughs> let's go. Now uh, the UBs, I usually follow the same technique for everything. 
But we're going to do something special with this one. The only thing that we're going to different, uh, doing different from other videos is that we're going to be using UDIMs because UDIMs are going to allow us to have way more geometry. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say planar mapping to create a just a base to work with. And I'm going to start going one by one. So let's delete this thing. And I'm going to grab everything. Or actually, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this layer UV ready. Let's start with the first one. So this one, super simple, uh, UV, 3D cotton UV, so UV tool, probably gonna grab like this ring right here and then the inner ring. Now, since we're gonna be using UDIMs, one thing that is gonna be very beneficial for us is to have these things divided in more pieces than what we normally do. So I'm gonna add, start adding a couple of more cuts, like let's say there, 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 and let's do one more here. And the reason why we want more cuts is because we want islands to be smaller on the on the UV grid and therefore uh, getting more resolution. You might be worrying about the fact that we're gonna have seams. Don't worry about it. I'm sure I'm gonna show you how to get rid of the seams inside of uh, inside of substance. So here we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, UV, 3D cut and so UV tool. I think this was hollow. No, it's not hollow. So let's cut a little cap there, which is gonna be hidden anyway. And then, for instance, I'm going to say, hey, you know what? I want the head to be its own, like, a UV. We can use the mouth as a, as a sort of line to have, like, the upper side and, and lower side. And then let's say that the neck is going to be another piece right here. Same deal. Try to grab a, a line that's on the inside so that we don't get any... <laughs> oh, so that the seams are as hidden as possible. So something like this. And then we're going to cut roughly around here, which is where this thing goes into the lamp. And then we can do another cut here where it comes out of the lamp. And let's do one more here at the at the middle section. And then, of course, I'm probably going to use the middle section here because it's the one that's most hidden. Well, on the, on the first part, like on the first segment, and then on this second segment, we're going to use this part right here. Even though we're we're doing multiple cuts, we definitely want to to keep the the lines as hidden as possible. So this to me looks very nice. Uh, so this one is ready. So I'm just gonna click add select object. Let's hide this. Click add selected object. This one super simple. I'm just gonna go UV, 3D cut, and we just need to cut through one side because it's uh, it's hollow. So when this one falls, it's just gonna be a flat ring. So that's perfect. Now this one gets a little bit more tricky because not only do we have like inner pieces, it's a very complex shape. So whenever I, I have complex shapes like this, I always recommend my students to, to separate them into easy to think about pieces, right? So for instance, I'm gonna say 3D cut and you, and so this cap of course is gonna be its own like layer. And then we have this ring, so we can cut right there, which is a, a seam that's gonna be hidden. And usually I like to cut the seams on the back like this so that we have a straight line. Now, in this case, since we again are doing uh, UDEMs, I'm gonna actually cut it in half. So we're gonna have one half and the other half, and there we go. Now, the inside definitely needs to be cut, so I'm gonna use the the edge loops that we have here on the holes to separate the, the inside. We're also gonna separate a cap on the inside. So there we go, and there, and there. Yeah, that's it. So the, the holes are now properly cut. And again, I'm, I'm trying to place the seam deep inside the element so that we don't see the, the line as, as bad as, as it might seem. Now here, I'm going to cut here. And as you can see, we have this whole thing as a, as a separate piece. I'm going to cut right through here. And again, just to keep more or to have more divisions, I'm going to cut through here as well. So it's going to be half and half. Uh, we keep moving on. So this one, now this one is a little bit too intense. You can see that this actually goes like really far out. So a good idea is to actually cut the little um, the little lip as a separate piece. That's also gonna help us relax. So the same thing here, we're gonna cut right here so that this whole section is a single line. Let's cut there and let's cut here. And then in here, we're gonna do the same thing. Let's go to like a line there. We cut right there and we cut right there have more holes in here so we definitely need to use our um, edge loops again to to separate the holes from the from the main geometry there we go and I'm probably gonna add one cut like right here which should be covered by the glass a little bit and then like in here you can see that this is really intense so let's let's cut it right about there so that we have 
a little bit more pieces. Same deal. Let's go half and half. And then here, let's go same thing like half and half. That should be working fine. So I think this is going to unfold nicely. Let's give it a shot. I mean, we, we're not doing any unfold just yet, but we can we can try with this one and, and see if my formula is working properly, which it should. I remember back in the day, I'm talking about like five or six years ago, performance was really, really important because uh, computers and, and systems were not as strong as what we have today. And uh, and then and people were like super, super intense about having everything be super optimized on the, on the UB side of things, which is always a good thing. But nowadays, things are so powerful that we really don't need to. So as you can see, a lot of the parts are, are nicely unfolding. We're getting this very nice uh, distribution, but we have a couple of them that are not. Now, this is very easy to fix because since we already have the general island, we can just go here and, and, and say edge, like select that edge, select that edge and say cut. And for instance, here, I'm just gonna select that edge and say uh, cut. And for instance, this one, I think I definitely wanna cut it in half as well. I'm not too worried about the seams because as I mentioned, there are ways to um, hide them. So cut and over here, cut. Now we grab everything again and we hit unfold and you can see all of the islands are nicely unfolding. So this is gonna work perfectly fine. Whoop. Let's close this, perfect. So that guy is ready, let's go here and there we go. Uh, the little snake, probably the easiest one of them all. I am just going to cut the head. Like right about here, I would say. One line through uh, the middle. Uh, probably, again, as hidden as possible. So something like this. That's perfectly fine. And then this big thing right here, I'm just going to do a cut through the middle uh, section. And add a couple of lines here. With very long things like this snake, you definitely want to add a couple of cuts uh, throughout the, the length of the element. Otherwise the UDIM technique is not gonna work as, as, as nicely. The glass uh, is just two, two sides to the same like cylinder. So I'm just gonna say UV, 3D cut. We cut uh, this border here, lower border, and uh, I'm gonna do halves as well. So half there, half there, half on the front, half on the front, and there we go. So right click, select the objects, there we go. Just a couple of more. Now this is probably the another like tricky one, not that tricky, but just keep in mind that it might take a little while. So I'm just gonna go um, UB, 3D cut. This is gonna be a cap. Of course, this is gonna be a cap as well. Did we get it? Yeah, we got it. And then we're definitely gonna have like one line there. Oh, let's add one line there to relax it as well. Uh, probably one line here on top. There we go. So now we're just gonna go to the back here. Cut right here, cut right here. I'll probably go to the front as well. Again, this is to, to get smaller islands and this is gonna be easier to cut. Now here, very carefully, I'm gonna again select the the inner side of the, of the holes. Like that. And now through the front view, we can cut here and here, cut here. Cut here, very important, cut all the way through. Otherwise, we're gonna get some weird results like what we saw a little while ago. Oop, there we go. There we go, and there we go. Now, could we have cleaner UVs? Definitely, as with everything that I've mentioned uh, so far. The more time you invest into something, the, the better everything is gonna look, so yeah. This one, super easy. It's just a cylinder, so you just need to cut cap cap and across and on the other side across and there we go that one's ready Oop. Uh, right click add selected there we go now this one's even easier it's just a cap so 3d cut i'm just going to use the same line that we used to to do the the cuts there just going to use that one and it's going to give me a very nice like ring so that one's Ready? Now, here's where things are gonna get a little bit tricky. And it's not super tricky because most of the shapes are, are very like circular shapes, but the fact that everything is in a single um, object might make it a little bit more confusing. 
So I'm going to do the same thing. It's just going to be cut here, cut here, and one line right across like that. Same for the guy right here. So cut here, cut here, and cut there. That's going to be cap, cap, and all the way around. And then this cylinder is just a lateral cut. And the sphere, I'll probably use the cap here on the sphere to cut it. And then again, just like one line that goes across. Now here, since we have a couple of triangles, it might be a little bit difficult, but doing that should be fine. I'm actually going to uh, cut this in half as well to help it relax a little bit better. So something like that. And that's it. That one, that one's ready as well. And finally, this guy right here. They're all very primitive shapes, so again, should be fairly easy. So that's a cylinder. And then let's cut uh, like across. One there. And then let's do the inner line there. There we go. This box right here, just one line across, that should be fine. Same for this one, just across, and it's going to be two flat surfaces. This spheres just across, like we're going to have the half and half of each sphere. And finally, this piece right here, this is a cap, or actually two of them. So this it's this cap, and then across, and then it's uh, this cap. this gap and across and that should be it those are think i think are all of the uvs which didn't take that long right so let's uh, bring everything back and now it's the 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 actual uh test so let's save this real quick i'm gonna say ub ub editor and i'm gonna grab all of the objects and i'm gonna try to do an unfold to all of them should work i mean it's not there's I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work. It's going to take a little while because, of course, it's a lot of faces. But you can see everything unfolded nicely. I don't see any, like, very weirdly distorted faces. Everything seems to be working fine. And here's where the big trick is going to come into place. Usually, what I tell my students is just grab everything here, go into Modify, Layout, and just lay everything out in a single UV tile, right? So this is what we've done. We did it for the Aku Aku mask. We did it for the Firefly. We did it for the grenade. Like we've been doing this for everything. And we get this very nice map right here. If we were to select this texture, you can see that everything is nicely uh, textured. So uh, everything is going to work fine in substance. However, the problem with this is that the resolution that we're going to get, it's not going to be great. So what we want here are UDEMs. Now, there are two materials, two main materials here. One is the glass. So I'm going to leave this out. And the other one is the metal. So I'm going to select everything but the glass. I'm going to select all the islands. And I'm going to go to Tools. Sorry, Modify, Layout. I'm going to change this to Horizontal. I think it's going to look nicer. And I'm going to go down here where it says Tiles U and Tiles V. And I'm going to change them. I'm going to change them to 5 on the, one, on the U axis. So what this is going to do now is it's going to distribute all of my islands in such a way that they occupy five tiles inside of our UB uh, element, okay? So instead of packing everything into a single texture, we're going to have five textures. Now, beware, this is heavy. You're going to have way more textures. You're going to have way a bigger render time, but it's going to look amazing. So five is it's way, it's actually, I think, a little bit of an overkill, but I, I want this thing to look really, really, really nice. So we're going to go for five uh, islands. So you can see this thing is, is packing the UVs, trying to find out how how best it can do it. And look at this beautiful thing. Great, right? So if we take a look at the resolution now, see how smaller the, the squares became. This is going to give us a very nice resolution. We're going to be able to have a zoom all the way to like something like this. And textures are going to still look very, very cool. So the only thing that worries me a little bit is the fact that some of the things don't look to be to be the same size. Like, see how these guys are very big and then other things are a little bit smaller? So let's try to fix that. Easiest way to fix it is to freeze the transformations. And I'm going to grab everything again, except for this guy. And I'm going to say uh, modify, layout, and I want to preserve the 3D ratios. Uh, let's give it another go. There's another way to do it, because sometimes when you have multiple objects, it, it, it freaks out a little bit and it doesn't do it properly. Uh, hopefully this time will work. Uh, the other thing is we can combine them, do it with the mesh combine, and then um, uncombine it, but it's just 
a little bit more time consuming because we have to rename everything. Let's see if we can get this to work. Just wait a couple more seconds. No, it did not. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate. I mean, it is trying to occupy the best possible space, but the problem here is that uh, some things are going to be super, super high definition and other things are going to be a little bit low definition. I'm going to leave it like this just for now um, because, I mean, having more definition is not a bad thing. I'm a little bit worried about these things that are not as high definition, but I don't think we're going to have an issue. So we're going to leave it like this. And, and for this one, uh, I think one map for the whole glass is good, but maybe we can do like two. I'm just going to do it manually here. And I'm going to try to get each one of this into a, a an element. Now, the one on the inside, which is this one, we can actually make them a little bit smaller because they're, again, on the inside, so we're not going to see them as much. Let's do something like this. It might seem like we're, we're um, losing a lot of space or we're not uh, making the best use of the space, but Udims tend to do that, especially with a lot of organic shapes. You're going to see the Udim is for a character, for instance, where there's only like half a hand in one map and there's a lot of wasted space. Because since this is going to be done on render time, we really don't care about um, about that kind of thing, like the performance. If this was for engines, of course, then this wouldn't fly. And uh, there we go. So I'm going to assign a new material to this guy. It's going to be just a basic Lambert. I'm going to call it... Let's do history. I'm going to call it M underscore uh, glass. And then I'm going to select everything else. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to assign a new shader as well. And this is going to be called M underscore metal. And there we go. Now we're ready to, to export this thing out. So the way we're going to export is very important. We're going to select everything here, the group and everything inside of the group, all of this guys, which as you remember, already have the UBs properly laid out into UDM form. And we're going to say file. Export selection, and it's very important that we export this as FBX. And I'm going to call this Snake Lamp, just like that, because this is the, the clean version. And then I'm going to do the same for the high polys. I'm just going to say File, Export Selection, and we're going to export, sorry, we're going to export this as uh, Snake Lamp underscore high. Very important that you do this in FBX, otherwise things might not work. So let me uh, go back here to ZBrush and save this real quick. And let's close it and let's up, up in Substance Painter, Adobe Substance Painter now. So I'm just going to do the bakes in this video, guys. We're just going to do the, the quick bakes. It's something very, very simple. And then on the next video, we're going to be doing the, um, the texture so that, again, we try to uh, remain on the, on the 30 minute mark. So let's do this real quick. I'm going to say file new. And we're going to select the um, the assets here. I'm going to select the snake lamp. We're going to select the snake lamp, the one that was clean. It's, uh, this one, I believe. Let's open. I, I think 4K is a little bit too much. Let's do 2K. And then if we want, we can export that 4K later on. And this, we're going to select UV tile settings, UDIMS, preserve UV tile layout per material, and enable painting across tiles. It's the first option. And we're going to hit OK. Now, if everything is working as intended, we're going to get this. We're going to have two material groups, the glass and the metal. And now for the bakes, this is the most important part. I'm going to go texture set settings, bake mesh maps. I'm going to select the uh, lamp base, la uh, not lamp base, snake lamp uh, high. And I'm going to check this to 2K maps. I am going to select a 2 by 2 anti-aliasing. And this is the most important part. In the normal map, I'm going to select match by mesh name. In the ambient occlusion, we're going to select self-occlusion, only same mesh name. And in the uh, thickness, we're also going to self occlusion only same mesh name. What this will do, and this is very important, is the objects that are named low and high, they're only going to transfer the detail from one to another. So let's uh, bake selected textures. And we're going to be able to see how everything is going to be baking here. You can see the, the glass there. there. We need a little bit more race. Uh, I'm going to check that in just a second. Because I think we're, we're missing something. Give me just one second. Uh, 
Of course, the two by two subsampling will make it a little bit uh, harder to work with, or not harder, longer to work with, but everything is, seems to be working nice for me here. Uh, you can see the metal, look at that. All of the details on the things that have details are being baked, which is exactly what we want. And things seem to be working nicely. Now, I do think I need to increase something, uh, a couple of things uh, in, in just a second. But I'm going to leave them like this just now. I'm going to stop the video, guys, because I really need to go. Something just came out. Uh, but we'll be back for the next video where we will be doing textures. And then we'll just have one more video where we will be doing, we will be doing a rendering. So hang on tight, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.